Welcome to part three of the Spectrum versus Intensity video series. This is the third and final part in the series, and I'm going to repeat that this is part three. So if you were just finding this video here on YouTube, I encourage you to watch the first two parts. Uh, this is kind of like watching the third installment of a trilogy movie series and not watching the first two. So I'm going to be covering a few things that I've already mentioned in the first two parts, but if you haven't watched the first two parts, the links will be up here for the entire series at the end of the video or in the description below. So just to kind of reiterate what the point of this whole thing is, mainly what I'm doing here is testing the Hidden Harvest Grow Light. This is a dual temperature grow light. It's uh, kind of unique, and what this basically means is you got warm white and cool white diodes. Those are 10,000K whites. Uh, which is kind of unusual for a white LED grow light. And then I'm not actually quite sure what the yellowish looking ones are. These might be like 2000K or 2500K. Um, anyways, that doesn't really matter too much. The overall color temperature when you test this is about 3500K when you mix all that together. Over here is the Atrium grow light. This is a much more efficient grow light, which is why it's actually sitting up higher and they're using both uh, the same wattages, which is I think 30 one watts, uh, I'm not sure exactly, I don't remember, but I talked about that before. Uh, this is a 4000K color temperature, single color temperature grow light, and that's sitting up higher just because it's more efficient, even though it's using the same wattage. Uh, I believe it's about 120 micromole or so, or, or 140 uh, at the soil level here, exactly the same. So what we're actually testing here is mainly the Hidden Harvest grow light, uh, but we're also looking at spectrum as well to see if the spectrum of this grow light here can suppress vertical growth uh, as well as a 4000K color temperature can. See if it does basically the same thing. Uh, there's a bunch of other things we're looking at, but that's kind of like one thing we're looking at. Where does the intensity part of this come from? Well, the intensity comes from after we do this here. So the Hidden Harvest grow light is hung exactly 18 inches above there because that's a recommended hanging height. But in some cases, and like in the first video or the video, yeah, the first video, the first part of the series, um, there was still a lot of reaching with that light at that height. So we're doing this again with more plants, uh, more seedlings. And then what we're going to do is if we're getting basically the same result between both of these, still a lot of reaching because I'm growing watermelon seeds and tomato seedlings or tomato seeds in both of these containers, the exact same amount each. Um, we're going to lower these lights here and increase the intensity and see if it does the same thing. Mainly what I want to look at is if the Hidden Harvest Grow Light hung at 18, 18 inches with that lower intensity of only just a little over 100 micromole can actually suppress vertical growth. And then we're going to see if intensity matters more than that or if it basically just does the same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and come back when these start to sprout and see what happens. Okay, it has been exactly 10 days since I planted these seeds and the tomato seeds have sprouted about a week ago. And today the watermelon seeds are starting to also sprout. And you can see them right here in the back. But we're gonna focus on the tomato seedlings right now. If you take a look at the height difference, I'll just kind of show over here, going as low as I can right here. It seems to me that even though there's more that sprouted under the atrium grow light over there, uh, and they do look maybe a little bit healthier, you can see that it seems like those are a little taller. And this is kind of strange because in the, uh, the last video, we kind of had the opposite effect with different types of seeds. So if we get a little closer look on the Hidden Harvest side, you can see here these look a little bit different. And I'm not really quite sure how to describe that. I mean, the leaves look different than the ones over here. I'll let you be the judge of that. So that's what they look like now. We're gonna come back when the watermelon seeds have uh, finished sprouting. All right, it has been some time since my last update and I figured this would be a good time to end this part of the experiment and make a few comments on it. Now you can clearly see right off the bat that it looks like the plants under the atrium light side are actually doing better. And I noticed this right in the beginning when the seedlings under the hidden harvest side were, when they sprouted, they just didn't look quite right they look different than the ones over here and i noticed the same thing that actually happened when i did uh, the pepper seedlings or the pepper seeds uh, it was look they were looking very similar to how those looked and i'm not really sure what that's about to be honest but if you look i mean look at the density over from one side to the other and a closer look these plants i wouldn't say that they look unhealthy they're just not growing as aggressively 
the leaves are growing a little bit slower. The true leaves aren't quite uh, as large. If you look over here in the atrium side, I mean, look at these. And like I said, this is the same amount of seeds. This was split evenly. And I, I can't really say that there's really much more germination. There may be a few that didn't come up over here, but overall, just looking at the appearance of them, uh, there's obviously a difference. And before we saw that they weren't really reaching a lot. I mean, they, these this side here was maybe a little bit taller than this side, uh, but other than that, it just seems like the ones under the atrium light are doing better. Now, I have to make it clear here that I'm not trying to uh, root for one light or the other or trying to say that one light is bad versus the other light. That's not really the point of this. We're basically just looking at spectrum, uh, like I said, spectrum versus intensity and try to uh, see how that affects reaching in the beginning stages. And so far at this point, if you can look at the uh, other two parts of this video, getting kind of contradicting results and we're not getting uh, repeatable things happening here. Uh, and that's why we're gonna continue this and I'll talk about that in a second here because if you look over here on the back side, these same two watermelon sprouts here, watermelon seedlings, are the same ones I showed before. These haven't really done anything but they are not they're not really reaching at all. Um, they're looking pretty good as far as the height goes. That's right about where they should be. Looks like there's maybe another one sprouting back there too. But overall, I think it's too late because the ones over on the hidden harvest side, it doesn't look like anything is happening. And I think pretty much the majority of them are, they're probably rotted by now. I don't think they're gonna germinate. And that might've been my fault because I probably should've used a heat mat. It's not really that cold where these are growing, um, around 68 to 70 degrees, but a Fahrenheit. But um, usually I use a heat mat. I, I kind of had the heat mat tied up for other stuff. So what I'm going to do now uh, to continue on to, to continue on with this experiment, I am not going to lower the right, the lights and increase the intensity like I did in the other two parts. I'm going to leave them where they are, and I'm going to instead of instead of planting tomato seeds, I'm going to plant. Uh, the watermelon uh, seeds on both sides, and then I'm going to use a heat mat to germinate them. And then we're going to take a look at the sprouts and see if we see the same trend, to see if these are taller than the ones over on the uh, hidden harvest side. After that, we will go from there and see if we want to lower the lights and increase the intensity just to see what happens. It depends. I'm not necessarily going to do that because in the other two parts of this series, I've already done that, uh, but it seems to me right now that there's not really much reaching go on, going on to actually need to do that for this particular part in this video series. So we're gonna come back um, after I plant some new seedlings with the water, or plant new seeds with the watermelon seeds. For those of you who have been following along on my channel lately, uh, this probably looks familiar. I got my inline thermostat, my heat mat down there, and this box here, I've been using this to grow uh, bacteria with petri dishes. And it's actually working out pretty well to use as an incubator to germinate seeds. So I've had these in here for just a couple days at a constant temperature of what you just saw in there, which is about um, 85 degrees or so. Um, and they're already germinating just after just a couple of days here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put, take these out and put them in the tent under the light right away to make sure that these things don't reach. It has been 13 days since the last segment of this video and I've planted a total of 15 seeds in each container. And you can see that there is less germination in the container on the right. Obviously this is nothing to do with the light, it just kind of happened that way. But you can see down here real low that there really isn't any height difference. So it doesn't really seem to matter about the spectrum so much with these types of plants, watermelons. Um, just for a reference, as you can see here, I got my measuring tape. If I put it right down here, we got about two and three quarter to three inches in height. And then over on the hidden harvest side, it's pretty much the exact same. So, I mean, they're almost completely identical other than the fact that there's less sprouts over there. Uh, there are actually a few more starting to sprout. We got one there. Uh, there's actually one back by that stem. And then there's a couple more starting here. But I mean, obviously there's plenty to look at at this point. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to lower these lights down to increase the intensity to see how much that actually suppresses the vertical growth. Because if I was sprouting watermelons to plant outside, I wouldn't want them to be this tall. This is, this is reaching. Normally I would like them to be shorter than that. 
Okay, we're back. I have lowered the lights down to increase the intensity at the soil level to 300 micromoles on each side, and I measured that to make sure it was even with my Apogee MQ500 PAR meter right there. I've also increased the quantity of seeds in each container, and they're spaced evenly, and I put 20 seeds in each. Uh, these seeds are actually taken from a watermelon that I grew in my basement here recently, and I have saved the seeds, so these are fresh seeds that are going to have better germination than the other ones that I had. Uh, actually, the video for that will already be posted by the time you see this video. If you're interested, it'll be up here or at the end of the video or in the description below if you want to see the indoor-grown hydroponic watermelon. So we're going to get this on underway and come back and see what happens. Okay, it is 11 days later now, and all of these seeds have sprouted very nicely, and they're starting to get their true leaves, so this is where I'm going to make my assessment of the experiment. If you go on real low here, you can see that the height difference on average isn't really a whole lot different. Uh, we're gonna take the measuring tape here and look at it closer though. So here under the left side, we got, so most of these here are around two inches, the shorter ones, inch and three quarters maybe, two inches, that one's inch and a half, inch and a half. Uh, some of the taller ones are around two and a quarter. And then this taller one back here is basically three inches. I, I couldn't really tell you why this one is taller than the rest. Uh, they're all, they all basically sprout at the same time. But if we go over the, here on the right side, under the hidden harvest light, uh, we got two inches for the shorter ones. Two inches, two inches, all the ones up front, two inches. On the back, two, inch and a half, well, maybe inch and three quarters there. And then some of these other ones here, right in the middle. If you take a look, right, this is where the most intense light is actually, right here in the center for this light. These here are three inches, two and a half to three inches, right there. So, I mean, just looking at those, I mean, there is some, obviously some uh, shorter ones that are actually pretty much identical. And then there's some medium sized ones that are pretty close to the same. And then, the only real major difference I'm looking at is just there's a few more seedlings over here under the Hidden Harvest one under where the most intense light is, and they're actually a little bit taller. Um, so to me, what this is basically saying is that uh, when, it's, when you're talking about white light or mixed spectrum white light, it doesn't really seem to matter too much about the spectrum itself. Uh, if you're talking about blurp of lights, that's a different subject, but we're just looking at white lighting here or, or variants of and the mixed spectrum white light over here obviously is not having a huge effect on reaching. Uh, as you saw in the past parts of this experiment, past videos, it depends on the plant, uh, but the intensity seems to have more of a significant difference in suppressing vertical growth than the spectrum itself. The spectrum itself is just very slightly, has a very slight effect when you're talking about uh, a white light that's used for general purpose growing and not one that's actually tuned for vegetative and blooming stages and all that. So what I'm going to do now before we cl uh, close out this video is I'm, gonna act I'm actually going to hook up this atrium light here with the driver that it actually comes with. Because for those who probably haven't followed along, if I forgot to mention, uh, this one here is actually running off different drivers that I could dim down to match the wattage of the uh, hidden harvest light. So that's why you're seeing this, you know, the height difference here. Even though, well, this is a more efficient light. That's why this is up higher, but it's matched wattages. So I'm going to plug in the... Uh, normal driver that this comes with and you can see just how much more light that the atrium light actually puts out I'm going to raise it up and you can see the difference. Okay, the atrium light is now hooked up with the driver that it comes with So it's now pulling basically twice the amount of wattage from the wall at 61 watts or close to it anyways And you can see here I've raised up the lights so that the par level matches that of a hidden harvest side still And we're right around 300 micromole there on the meter So if I move it over here to the hidden harvest side, I'll show you that it's the same now, Hidden Harvest Side doesn't have a dimmer on it. It's just putting out uh, basically a set wattage. So if we put the meter over here, you can see that I'm getting roughly the same. 299, 300, so basically the same. So if you take a look at this, there's the height difference. You can see that obviously it's gonna be even higher now because there's a higher wattage, but uh, what does this actually mean? Well, someone argue that the Hidden Harvest Light is a, a better spectrum and some would argue that it's not. And obviously the fact is it is a less efficient light. Obviously you have to have it that low to have that much intensity. Um, but mainly what we're looking at here is how much light output in total do you have for you know, your price? So I think these lights are both around the same price. 
uh, even if you consider buying the um, driver, I think it's sold separately. Uh, I think both of those are basically the same price. We're pretty close to it. The difference though is the atrium light, you know, this is up higher, you're gonna get a much larger coverage area. So it depends on how you wanna look at it. So if you feel that the hidden harvest light is actually putting out a better spectrum and your plants do better underneath it, well then the hidden harvest light would be for you. But the atrium light being at the same price, I mean, the output to me, uh, in some cases, depending on, you know, if you're looking at the experiments I've done with these lights, it doesn't seem to matter too much about the spectrum, especially with the past experiments that I've done too. So I think it really depends. Uh, I like the atrium light just because it has a higher output and more coverage area. Uh, Hidden Harvest Light, I've done plenty of rows with these already and they seem to work okay. It's just that you just don't get the spread on them. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.